Confirmations of Special Relativity As incredible as these predictions were, over the 20th century, all of these effects of relativity have been confirmed in experiments. In fact, every day you might confirm relativity without realizing it. Technologies, like GPS, would not be possible without accounting for time dilation. That car batteries work at all is due to effects of special relativity within lead atoms. Relativity accounts for many chemical properties, like why mercury is a liquid and why gold is yellow. Electrons in gold atoms travel at over half the speed of light. Under special relativity, this causes the electrons to gain momentum which makes the electrons preferentially absorb blue light rather than invisible UV light. If not for this effect, gold would be silver in color. Each time you hear a car's ignition, see the glint of a gold ring, or use GPS to get somewhere, you reconfirm Einstein's theory. Is the speed of light constant? All predictions of special relativity follow from two assumptions. The first is that the laws of physics work the same regardless of one's speed or direction. The second, is that the speed of light is constant for all observers, regardless of their speed or direction. This is known as the principle of invariant light speed. Though it seems innocuous, this is what leads to the strange effects predicted by relativity. You might consider yourself to be at rest right now. But you, along with our galaxy, are moving at speeds over a million miles per hour. Earth spins at over 1,600 km per hour around its axis. It also circles the Sun at over 100,000 km per hour. Earth, together with the rest of her solar system, orbits the galactic center at nearly a million km per hour. Further, our galaxy and neighboring galaxies are falling towards an unseen mass called the Great Attractor at over 2 million km per hour. But regardless of our direction of motion through space, or the angle from which we measure it, the speed of light is always the same. Ranging the Moon The Moon is circling the Earth at 3,679 km per hour. With the winding orbit of the Moon around Earth, the Earth circling the Sun, and Earth's daily spinning, the relative motion and position between the Earth and the Moon is always changing. Sometimes the moon is behind us, other times it's ahead, and at still other times, it's to our side. Despite these changes, scientists find no difference in how long it takes for light to get to the moon and back. Apollo astronauts left mirrors on the moon, the lunar ranging retro reflectors. Scientists on Earth can bounce lasers off these mirrors to get a return signal. Scientists have measured how long it takes a laser beam to go to the moon and back. The beam is bounced off retro reflectors, which like the reflectors on bikes, reflect light in the direction it came from. Only one photon in 10 to the power of 17 makes it back, but this is enough for us to measure the distance to the moon to the precision of a millimeter. It's a stunning confirmation of the principle of invariant speed of light. Regardless of the speed, direction, or relative motion between the Earth and Moon, the time it takes for light to get to the Moon and back is the same, and so we conclude the speed of light is the same. Measuring time Directly testing some predictions of relativity is difficult. Since effects like time dilation are negligible when not traveling close to the speed of light, Confirming it requires either very fast vehicles, or very accurate clocks, or perhaps some combination. It's easy to forget that in 1905, cars were the fastest vehicle and the most accurate clocks were based on pendulums. The 20th century saw great improvements in both vehicle speeds and clock accuracy. All clocks are based on resonators. Something that cycles at regular intervals. Clocks count these cycles or ticks to measure time. In grandfather clocks, the resonator is a swinging pendulum. In mechanical watches, it's a bouncing spring. In digital clocks, it's the electrically stimulated vibrations of a quartz crystal. 
Given manufacturing defects, these methods are only so accurate. No two pendulums, springs, or quartz crystals are exactly alike. And further, differences in temperature or pressure can throw them off. Atomic clocks. All atoms of the same isotope are identical. As early as 1879, Lord Kelvin proposed using atomic resonances to keep time. But it was not until 1955, several months after Einstein's death, that the first accurate atomic clock was built. Every atom preferentially absorbs specific frequencies of light. Therefore we can use atoms to tune light to exact frequencies. Once the light is tuned by these atoms, we can build a clock that counts the oscillations of the light wave. Atomic clocks, rather than counting pendulum swings, counts the oscillations of an electronic signal that generates light of a specific frequency, tuned by identical atoms. The cesium-133 isotope was chosen to be used in all atomic clocks. Cesium was selected for having a lone electron in its outer shell. This makes it especially sensitive to excitation. While a stopwatch might track seconds to three decimal places, atomic clocks track seconds to ten decimal places. The light wave that cesium absorbs best ticks 9,192,631,770 times per second. These clocks provided sufficient accuracy to directly test time dilation. Time dilation Time dilation is one of the stranger predictions of special relativity. It says that the faster something moves the slower it experiences time. Quote, if one of two synchronous clocks at A is moved in a closed curve with constant velocity until it returns to A, the journey lasting t seconds, then by the clock which has remained at rest the traveled clock on its arrival at A will be, one half t times v squared divided by c squared seconds slow. End quote. Albert Einstein, in On the Electrodynamics of Moving Bodies, 1905. Time doesn't just seem to go slower. It actually passes more slowly, by every physical measure. Clocks run slower, radioactive atoms decay slower, and life forms age and metabolize slower. If you were subject to time dilation, you wouldn't notice, because even your brain activity and thought patterns would operate more slowly. But if you were to later meet up with someone who didn't undergo time dilation you would find they have aged more than you. This leads to the famous twin paradox, where according to special relativity one of two identical twins goes on a high-speed space voyage and returns to find their sibling significantly older. Testing time dilation Despite the strangeness of time dilation and what it leads to, it has been tested and confirmed as a genuine phenomenon. The first evidence came in 1932 with the Kennedy, Thorndike experiment. However, the evidence was indirect. In 1907, Einstein said one way to directly test it is to look for a transverse Doppler effect in light from a fast-moving source. This effect is due to time dilation experienced by a moving light source. It took experimenters 30 years to figure out a way to test this. Technology to accelerate flashlights to near light speed didn't exist. Experimenters had to get creative. Herbert Ives created the color fax machine in 1924 and the video phone in 1927. In 1938, Ives, together with his colleague, G. R. Stilwell, designed and executed the first experimental test of time dilation. The two built a device that used electrodes charged to 43,000 volts to accelerate charged hydrogen ions to half a percent the speed of light. These atoms were charged by stripping them of an electron. When a charged atom reclaims an electron, it releases a particle of light. In effect, single hydrogen atoms acted like miniature flashlights. It was enough to confirm Einstein's prediction. It was also the first direct confirmation of special relativity, 33 years after it was published. Twin Paradox 
Does time dilation really apply to such things as people? Could time dilation really cause a person to age less? It seems absurd, but according to the theory, a trip on a fast rocket would allow one twin to age 5 years while the other age is 50. To test this, engineers needed either a very fast vessel, or a very accurate clock, or perhaps some combination of each. With the rise of commercial air travel in 1952, and the invention of the atomic clock in 1955, it became possible to test the twin paradox. In 1971, two experimenters, Joseph Harfler and Richard Keating flew around the world with a pair of atomic clocks. After the trip, Harfler and Keating compared the time on their clocks to the time of atomic clocks that were left behind. The clocks they brought with them now ran behind the clocks that stayed home. The clocks, and accordingly the people that stayed put aged more. Harfler, Keating, the pilots, the plane, and the clocks they took with them all aged less, by about 50 nanoseconds. It was a small effect, but enough to notice using atomic clocks. The amount of time they lost was exactly what relativity predicted. Time dilation is real. Time dilation and GPS. You verify time dilation every time you use GPS. GPS is based on extremely accurate timekeeping. When GPS detects you moved over by one foot, it did so by noticing the radio signal from one of these satellites now takes one nanosecond longer to reach you. The more precise the clock, the more precisely GPS can determine your location. To keep its rhythm, each GPS satellite has its own atomic clock on board. But to remain in orbit, each satellite has to move at a very high speed, approximately 4 km per second, about 9,000 miles per hour. At this speed, relativity predicts the clocks will run slower by 7 microseconds a day. It seems insignificant, but this loss of time would throw GPS off by about 2 km a day. GPS would soon be useless. Fortunately, the designers of GPS knew about time dilation. They took it into account and adjusted the clocks to run faster to compensate for this effect. Given that GPS works with these adjusted clocks confirms that we experience time differently than GPS satellites do. Significant Time Dilation For Harfler and Keating flying around the world, and for GPS satellites, the loss of time amounts to just fractions of a second. But these differences in time are only negligible because the speeds are negligible compared to the speed of light. The lost time is small because compared to the speed of light the speed is small. Jets travel at just 0.0001% the speed of light, and GPS satellites at 0.00134%. But at 98% the speed of light, time is dilated by a factor of 5. That means we experience 5 seconds for each second experienced by an object traveling at 98% light speed. At 99% the speed of light, time passes 7 times slower. Under relativity, there is no limit to how much slower time can run, it is only a matter of how close to light speed you can get. Photons, which travel at the speed of light, experience no time at all. To a photon, the entire history of the universe unfolds in an instant. Particle accelerators. Technology to accelerate objects to great speeds now exists. In fact, if you have an old TV that isn't a flat screen, it contains technology that accelerates particles to 10% the speed of light. But modern particle accelerators can do better. The Large Hadron Collider, the world's most powerful particle accelerator, can accelerate particles to 99.9999991% the speed of light. At this speed time passes 7454 times slower. Significant time dilation effects have been confirmed. Though we can't yet accelerate large objects like clocks, to near the speed of light, unstable particles can serve as miniature clocks. For instance, 
we might use muons. They are unstable particles with an average lifetime of 2.2 microseconds. In 1977, researchers at CERN accelerated muons to 99.941% the speed of light. At this speed, they observed the muons survived an average of 64 microseconds, almost 30 times longer than usual. This confirms the twin paradox. A person accelerated to this speed would age 30 times slower than the rest of us left on Earth.